Should biologists learn Python? A lot of my students and followers have been asking me questions like this, especially in relation to which coding language should a biologist learn if they want to learn how to program. Biologists should learn Python for a multitude of different reasons, and I'm going to go over those in this video. I'm also going to give a few applications of Python as it's used in biology, what kind of biologists should be learning Python exactly, and of course, how to get started because there's so many resources out there, it's a little bit hard to choose, especially if you're interested in a total newbie when it comes to programming languages. Even if you aren't a newbie, this video could be useful for you, so make sure you stay tuned to the very end and give it a like if it's helpful for you. So as you probably know today, biology has gotten more and more complex and the more data that we work with, the more necessary it becomes to actually learn how to program with a multitude of languages. There's so many of them out there, including Ruby, R, Python, Bash, MATLAB, SAS, Perl. There's so many more that even aren't on this list that could come up for you one day. If you're thinking about majoring in biology in college, doing any sort of biological research, or just becoming a scientist, by understanding the fundamental concepts of different programming languages, you will have an edge up on a lot of other students in your biology program. If you're a biologist who's thinking about learning a language for their graduate work or professional lives, getting started with programming and computational thinking is a really essential skill that could definitely have benefits for you in the job world. Getting started with at least one, you'll be able to break down barriers that might be in front of you later down the road. Unlike certain other skills you might learn in college or high school or during an internship, computer programming language are created to solve particular problems. So make sure that the language you choose to pursue is actually going to help solve the problems that are going to arise for you. If you're already in graduate school or you're thinking about going down that route, think about what kind of labs you'll be working with and tools and resources that your mentors already use. There's no one best universal programming language for biology, but I will say Python does have its advantages, especially as a first language to learn. As far as learning curves go, a lot of scientists believe that this one isn't too bad. It's a good first language to dive into. Most people tend to say it's pretty intuitive as compared to some other languages. There's tons of documentation, it's open source, and there's huge communities online that can help you in your Python learning journey. It's got some specific indenting that you're gonna to have to use, which makes it a little bit more readable, especially for beginners. And especially for biology, it has some features that are gonna make it easier for you to deal with long strings of characters, like a chain of DNA, for example. So when and why should you be using Python in each of these scenarios? Well, if you're in high school, if you're looking into getting into computational thinking and coding, it'll give you early experience compared to your peers because a lot of students won't even get to this until their graduate programs. It also might open up the doors for particular internships or mentorship opportunities where you can go into labs and work with people and get your hands on in science really early on. So it's a great leg up if you're at the high school level. It's gonna increase your skill set, make you more marketable for those jobs and internships down the road. And of course, like I said, break down barriers to getting into maybe some higher level coursework or opportunities. If you're an undergraduate student, this is also gonna help you get lab jobs or help you dive into early research. There are some research opportunities that are gonna be opened up to you if you are able to use any sort of programming language in the lab. For example, here are just a few opportunities that I pulled that are asking the people going into that undergraduate research opportunity to already have experience in programming or things like Python and Linux. In graduate school, you're probably gonna to have to learn how to code to meet your research needs or the research needs of your PI in your lab. This is also gonna help you with your job search later on if you look to go out into industry. If you have a particular coding skill set, especially Python, which is quickly becoming the most popular programming language out there, you're going to be more qualified than other candidates searching for similar jobs as you. And of course, if you're a professional biologist looking to learn how to code because it's going to meet the needs of your workplace, or you have a particular problem that you're trying to solve for your work, you may need to dig into learning how to program right away. An entry-level job such as this one at RTI sometimes have analytical programming experience as part of their preferred skill set. What exactly would you be doing with Python if you're a biologist or studying biology or want to study biology? Well, there's actually tons and tons of applications out there, but it's really important to see Python in context of biology when you're starting to learn it. Just learning coding for the sake of coding isn't necessarily going to make a lot of sense to you, especially if you're a beginner starting out. So look for opportunities to see how this would actually interact with your data or your field of study, and that'll make you all the more motivated and quicker to pick up some of these concepts. Obviously, working with big data becomes harder and harder once your data sets get into the hundreds of thousands or the millions. So eventually, if you're analyzing any type of big data, you're probably going to need 
the help of a programming language at some point. A lot of what Python is helpful with is in genomics, so we're analyzing genomes or specific genes of different organisms. Now that we have NGS or next generation sequencing, what we can do is read all of the base pairs very quickly within a particular sample and then organize them into specific files. And with Python and other programming languages, we are able to align it and search for specific sequences or nucleotide substitutions and DNA and RNA in an entire genome or just one particular protein. Also, we can use this to study ecosystems and detect differences in an organism or a community. We can also use Python in graphing or in summary statistics. R is another language that is helpful here, and some people prefer using R over Python, but it might be best to get your hands dirty with Python first and then dive into R as you need it. Once you've picked up one programming language, it'll be all the more easier to go and dive into another later down the road as you come up with problems that need to be solved by other languages. Also with Python, you can get help with mass spectrometry, population studies, phylogenetics. There are so many different fields. So even if you're an ecologist or an environmental scientist, Python could be helpful for you one day. What about healthcare or doctors? Maybe you're someone who wants to go down the pre-med route. Well, I would still recommend digging into Python a little bit. Not only is it gonna give you a leg up in your undergraduate program as you prepare to go to medical school, but maybe it could be useful to you as a doctor one day, having the knowledge to use data science in healthcare, which is a huge growing field. You may even find a passion for healthcare data science and wanna go down that route further on. Maybe you wanna solve a particular problem with the help of computational analysis or develop a healthcare app one day. So let's say you wanna get started. Maybe this is gonna be your summer project and you wanna dip your toes into learning Python. There's an amazing community out there, but it can be a little overwhelming because there are just so many resources and they're targeted to lots of different people, lots of different levels. If you wanna just play around with computational thinking, I have a whole other video on that and how to get started with Scratch, but that's very basic level coding that elementary students can actually get into. So let's say you're interested in learning Python. Well, I would suggest starting on YouTube. There's lots of great free tutorials out there that are going to show you how to go through some of the basic commands of Python and apply this in, in particular context. Again, don't just learn Python for the sake of learning how it works. Learn it so that you can apply it to solving problems within the field of biology. I'll link this YouTube channel and a few others in the description below if you want to explore some of these great tutorials that already exist for learning Python in the context of biology or bioinformatics. Next up, there's lots of great books and other written resources and tons of documentation so that you can follow along with all of your questions and needs as you go through. This Python for Biologists has a lot of good resources on their website as well, and so I'll link this below. Lastly, I'll recommend Rosalind, which is a great problem-based application way of studying Python and other bioinformatic tools where you can start as a total beginner and then level up as you want to try your hand and more bioinformatics and biology related challenges. What resources have you used in trying to get started with coding? Why do you want to learn how to code? Put your ideas in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and if you have any other questions related to programming and biology or bioinformatics, please reach out. Give this video a like if it's been helpful and I'll see you later.